Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Three Strands Pod. How you feel, how you feel, how you feel? 25 sitting on 25 million, sitting on 25 million. Right, I hope you guys are feeling good. I hope you guys are feeling fantastic, energised, ready, pumped. But, 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 what? I said, but, but, but. I don't know what that was, but I hope that's how you're feeling. <laughs> I hope, oh, I was going to say that, I hope that's the sound of your heart, but I don't know if that's healthy. So if there is a healthy version to that, then I hope that's how your heart feels. I hope that's how you yeah, good for, good for you. <laughs> You guys know that I stay plugging you with the music and of course music is like 99% of my life. I've been listening to so many new songs so I'm here to give you guys my favourites right now. Okay so whatever you need to write down the names of these songs or to search it, whatever it is I'm going to give you two seconds. One, two, cool you should have got it ready by now. All right, these suggestions are in no particular order, but of course we have to start with my bestie at number one, yeah? Bawo with Building Castles. Oh my God, first of all, first, let's just take it, let's take them back. Bawo has his EP, Live and Let Thrive. Guys, yeah, first of all, the artwork is impeccable. Absolutely astounding. Topest of all the tiers, absolute top tier. And all the songs come... Please don't lie my head, but let me not even, let me not even sing it. You guys have to go and listen. Sorry. At number two, we have Hybrid Minds and Tiffany Juno with Touch. This song is an absolute banger. It completely just slappity slappity slaps off. Now, this one is an absolute favourite of mine only because it really gives me that 2013 house music era. Like, you know, Rudimental's Home and like Disclosure Settle? It's given that. So if that's the kind of music that you're into, touch. Tiffany, Juno and Hybrid Minds. Number three is Notion featuring Carrie Baxter with Found Love. This is another one that is giving like house-ish techno vibe. That funky funky. This one, again, is another favourite of mine because it gives me that 2013 vibe, you know? So again, if that's not really your steez, then maybe you might not like it, but it is a good song. So maybe this is your entry point into the house music genre. You're welcome. And number four is Young Folks by Peter Bjorn and John. Now, this song isn't actually new. It came out like 2006, but it is a song that I recently refound and I'm enjoying again. So for everyone in the UK that knows about B&Q, you know the song that they use in their adverts, the whistling one? That is Young Folks. That's the song I'm suggesting to you. So, yeah, if you grew up in the UK or you know about B&Q adverts, then you probably already know this song, which is why it was kind of a nostalgic feel for me when I refound the song, and which is why it was so easy for me to enjoy it. So, thems is my suggestions. Make sure you play them. Let me know which is your favourite or what songs you like, or if you guys want to feature your own song, if you guys are singers, songwriters, whatever it is, artists, let me know. So, with the song suggestions out of the way, the time has come to make a deal. What a deal. So, without further ado. Oh, oh, oh. I said, without further ado. Oh, oh, oh. Give the intro. Something years of age and life surely ain't about handouts, so I lays my plan out. Hard work is living catered to an art called survival. Consider John's lesson from conception to arrival. Now that I'm here, my fear shall decrease. Learning about life, making my way to the east. From four square yard struggle up the G's on time. Your God hit me with yeah, that run. So Okay, hello class. Today we are going to be talking about the joys and shared experiences of being a black student. And from the title, I can trust that you guys already know was about to go down. So as always, get your popcorn, get your crisps, get your snack or get your notepad and pencil, pen, whatever. Take some notes and get ready to learn because you're going to learn something today, okay? Okay, to start us off, I'm going to let you guys know what it is that I found in a March 2021 article from The Guardian. They stated that 
Exclusion rates for black Caribbean students in English schools are up to six times higher than those of their white peers in some local authorities. Tell me why, why it's gotta be like that. Why? What is happening that black Caribbean students in English schools are up to six times higher than their white peers? What is that about? I also found that campaigners and think tanks warned of school exclusions contributing to the criminalisation of children and disproportionately affecting those from poorer backgrounds. I also came across a recent report by the Institute of Race Relations who warned of a, quote, PRU, which is a pupil referral unit, to prison pipeline for working class black children. I think that this PRU to prison pipeline that the Institute of Race Relations was warning about is, I think it's very, it's a very valid point. But I think where the campaigners have warned that school exclusions will contribute to the criminalisation of children, especially those from poorer backgrounds, I think them being excluded from school, and I say them, I'm speaking about black children, them being excluded from school is where the criminalisation starts, that they are discriminated against because of their race and that there are different factors that um, schools will use to marginalise black students within the schools and then use that as the foundation for the basis of exclusion. That is where I believe that the criminalisation of these children begins, not once they are excluded, that it then contributes towards them moving towards criminalisation. I think the criminalisation most definitely starts within the school, with the teachers, unconscious bias, racism, whatever it is that you want to call it, I believe that that is where it starts. But that is not to say that um, being excluded from school will not contribute to further criminalisation of children. I feel like that is possible and I feel like that is fair to say. But again, I think it begins within the school and then exclusion contributes towards it, yes. And I think that one of the main issues with exclusion is that it leaves these children vulnerable to exploitation, to criminalisation, to all of these things. And those from the poorer backgrounds won't even have the socioeconomic means of protection against the dangers of not being in school. So then they are more inclined to be a part of these um, criminal backgrounds or they are more inclined to be um, exploited, taken advantage of, whatever it may be because they're already from these poor backgrounds that don't have a lot to support them. So I don't know how excluding them from school is going to better their situation, but, I mean, I'm not a teacher. I don't know what the rules are on exclusions. So I think identifying the children from the poorer backgrounds who are close to being excluded and finding ways of supporting them to prevent criminalisation or exploitation or being taken advantage of or whatever I think that is the best place to start as opposed to just excluding them and then pointing the finger to say oh I knew that you were a bad child because you've now become a part of something that isn't educational or beneficial to you or your development or whatever whatever so as always I had to go to my trusty trusty Twitter because Twitter never ever lets me down thank you first of all can we just take a second to thank everybody who uses Twitter, people that share links to things, people that just tweet things that inspire me to research or people that go there and share their think pieces. Thank you, because you guys are the backbone of society, yeah? We t- we appreciate y'all. <laughs> we appreciate y'all. No fake news though, no fake news. So I went to Twitter and I saw a tweet by a woman named Karina, who is the co-founder of the Black Mums Upfront podcast. Make sure you guys check them out and support black mothers. And Karina tweeted a secondary school in South London and she said, quote, This is hugely problematic at St. Columbus. Can you explain how a child, quote, is making very poor life choices by having slits in his eyebrows? Or how having slits in his eyebrows is, quote, associated with gang-related activity. Now, you're probably wondering, what on earth is going on here? Okay, let's take a bet. So, a teacher from this secondary school, St. Columbus, sent an email to a parent, and it reads, Dear parent slash carer, your son has returned to school with lines shaved into his eyebrows. Your son is fully aware that we do not accept shaved lines in hair or eyebrows at St. Columbus. 
your son is making very poor life choices with deliberate actions such as this. It is clear he is being influenced by the group of friends he has been associating with and we were informed by the police that this type of behaviour is associated with gang-related activity. Then the email goes on to mention GCSEs coming up and how this boy in question may need a fresh start elsewhere and it also includes a link to an email address for support for parents of young men at risk of being groomed by gangs. And then finally the email concludes with, quote, I have removed your son from lesson today where he completed his work away from the rest of his class. I will also not be allowing him to mix with his peers at break or lunch for the foreseeable future. Can I also ask that the marks are filled in with eyeliner or something similar? Thank you for your support in this matter. There's just too much in this email that it's almost a joke. Like this, (laughs) baby, I just don't get it. (laughs) I actually don't understand. Like there is so much to dissect here. I mean, I understand that the teacher included the link to the helpful at-risk young men, but the chasm between a slit in your eyebrow and being at risk is a lot bigger than this teacher knows. Like, it's a lot bigger. It is a lot bigger than you have a slit, now you're at risk. Like, no, 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 no. I mean, I'm hoping that this teacher meant well and meant no disrespect to the student or to his friends or even his parent or carer because this email is giving too much anti-black vibes. For me, the anti-blackness is too much for me to just dismiss it as helpful or, you know, just looking out for his best interest. Nah, it's too anti-black. Dog, I mean, I mean, there's anti-black and then there's anti-black. And then there's just racism. This is all of them. This is all of them. I mean, everybody and their uncle's dog's elbow knows that this email was not written by a black teacher. No black person has ever looked at another black person with a slit in their eyebrow and thought, fam, he's in a gang. No, that's it. The slit. Yeah, that's, I know it. I know that slit anywhere. That's gang. That right there is gang affiliation. No one. No black person has ever done that in the history of black people ever. What is that? In the same way that no black person has ever looked at someone else that has braids or even an afro and thought, mmm, they look too unprofessional with their hair like that. Nah, it's not work. That's just, yeah, it doesn't work. It's just not professional enough. No one, these are just things that never ever get said. That just doesn't happen. That's how we know that anti-blackness was thriving when this person was typing this email out. At this point, this teacher needs to just say that they're anti-black or just say that they're racist because there's really no time for you to be sitting and typing emails about gangs that people are not in, gang affiliations that people do not have. Why are we doing this? Just, no, sit down and just think, am I anti-black? Hmm. Am I racist? Hmm. Yes. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't type this then. Maybe I need to deal with my racism. Maybe I need to deal with my unconscious bias. Maybe I need to figure out why I'm anti-black. Because black people don't want to sit and hear about what white people think about slits in our eyebrows and gang affiliate. That's, it's not even adapting. Like I said, the chasm between having a slit in your eyebrow and being in a gang, it's not literally like my left hand, my right hand. It, no. It's million, zillion, quadrillion miles. It's not, it's not adapting. It's act, listen, listen to me. For those of you that are anti-black, it's not a that thing. I don't get why anti-black or racist people just like to believe that they know everything. Like, there's actually no harm in asking a black person if the email you're sending is fine. Or even before you type out the email, ask a black person to confirm or deny your suspicion of the eyebrow or the hairstyle being a part of gang association. Because you could save everybody some time. You really don't have to go down this road and drag everybody black with you. It's not that deep. You could actually just ask a black person, excuse me, am I moving mad? Then I'll tell you, yes, Karen, you're moving mad. Do you know what I thought was hilarious with this email? Not only did the teacher write out this email that is completely done out, they also isolated this student from his peers. And then they said that they would do so, quote, for the foreseeable future, Brother, it is a slit in his eyebrow. Oh my gosh. Oh my actual gosh, you need to chill. When I say school is a mad place to be black, you'll actually think I'm joking. 
it's actually like a joke. Being black and being in school is like a joke. Everything you do, there's a problem. Having a slit in your eyebrow, now you can't go kickball with your boys because you came to school with less eyebrow hair than you did on Friday. This, this, do you know what's mad? She said for the foreseeable future. Foreseeable future. Brother, we're talking about eyebrow hairs here. We're talking about eyebrow hairs and my man can't go kickball at lunch now. Now he can't kick ball at lunch because he has less eyebrow hairs. Does that make sense? Tell me, if it's not anti-black, if it's not racist, what is it? Because one plus one is ten trillion at this point. Ten gadrigadigalillion. That's what that is. How is this not anti-black? Because listen, I'm going to speak from experience. I'm going to speak from what I know. When I was in secondary school, the black boys were getting in trouble for eyebrow slits. Or even having, you know when they put like a little neck tick in their hair or even a little start that was problematic. But the white kids, oh, they had pink hair. Oh, they had blue hair. They had green hair, purple hair, rainbow hair. But Michael can't come to school with less eyebrow hair than he did yesterday. Hmm? But Katie can have red hair. Fam, all the white girls were able to do rainbow-tastic hair. Oh my days, the anti-blackness. Oh my gosh, I can't. I can't. I actually can't. Because we black girls were told that our braids, yeah, our extensions have to be black. That's it. Colour one. Not even one B. Colour one finished. That's it. We can't have blonde. We can't have red or blue. We can't have silver. We can't do. But Katie and Megan and, and Bobby, they can be doing all kinds of something, something. I said, oh my gosh. I said, oh my gosh. I just, big man thing. Big man thing, if it's not anti-black and it's not racist, let me know what it is. Because from where I'm standing, the air is looking very racially disparated. Okay? It's not correct. So be correcting it. The sad thing is that this isn't just happening in the UK. In Ghana, two students were denied admission into a high school because of their hairstyle. The school wanted to deny the students admission on the basis of their Rasta culture, which the former MP, Ras Mubarak, said it was not a step in the right direction. He also said, quote, Not accepting them into the school because of their dreadlocks is degrading treatment, which is frowned upon under Article 28.3. The school may have its rules, but those rules and all other rules and laws are subservient to the Constitution of Ghana. So, in the end, the students were allowed to attend the school, but there should have been no reason for them to have been turned away or denied or ridiculed because of their hairstyle, because of their culture. Like, that, this should not even be a thing. Like, we shouldn't even have to bring this up. These should not be determining factors as to whether or not you accept a student into a school. That's absurd, to say the least. Another story that I found was a lot sadder because it happened to someone a lot younger. So it was of a four-year-old boy, four, one, two, three, four. Those are all the years he spent on the earth, okay? Four-year-old boy whose parents were asked to remove his braids. And the administrators of the school called his mother and told her that her son's hairstyle violated the private school's dress code, which banned, now wait for it, locks, braids, and other styles. They don't want to get into the other styles, but, um... Locks and braids, that's all we needed to hear. We know what you're trying to do. <clears throat> Anti-black. What was funny to me was that as I continue to do a little more research into this particular story, it turns out that the principal of the school is a black man. Now, to keep it plain and simple for all of you that don't know what's happening here, if you haven't figured it out already, when it's non-black people, they are anti-black. When they are black people, it's self-hate. Okay... Again, I just think it's really annoying to see that this is what black students have to keep going through, like across the globe, across the borders, across the continents. It just, how is this such a universal experience for black students? I mean, this little boy was four years old when this happened to him. Like hairstyles that are a part of the culture are the reason why we're being denied education. What is that? Because of my hair. The hair that grows out of my head is the reason why you don't want me to be in your school. And I'm I'm the one that's done out. Come on, face your book. As black people, we are punished for loving and embracing and protecting our natural hair. Now, 
I do understand that slits are not necessary for maintaining your hair or your eyebrows. But if non-black students are allowed to come into school with hair dyed in colours of the rainbow, of the skies, of the seas, of the Himalayas, all of these colours, then why can't a young black boy have a little less eyebrow hair on Monday morning? Hmm? Why can't a young black girl rock her natural fro on Monday morning? Why does it have to be such a big discussion and such cause such commotion for you? I genuinely don't understand it. This exact reason is why it's so annoying to see non-black people being praised for doing protective black hairstyles that we as black people are condemned for doing. Like, non-black girls can wear braids to school or work and be told, oh yeah, you're cool or you're edgy, or they're even able to rename and rebrand the hairstyles that we have been wearing for centuries and name it something random. But if a black woman wants to do her hair for work, then, you know, you have to, like, mentally prepare yourself to be bombarded with a million and one questions just about braids and even the possibility of a few stares or side eyes because people in the workplace don't think it's appropriate whatever that means but that's a whole other conversation to be had about black women and hair and the workplace we could talk about that another day but today i want to know have you guys had any experiences like this been excluded from school removed from class because of your hairstyle what is it what was your experience being a black student let me know talk to me call me on the hotline six seven eight triple nine eight zero one zero As always, the links to everything that I have referenced will be in the description below. So if you are interested in doing any further research, then make sure you check down there to find whatever it is that you need. And if you guys do find anything that I didn't mention or anything that you think is interesting about these topics, be sure to share the knowledge. But that is it from me. Until next time, peace in the Middle East to you and your crew. What, what? Peace in the Middle East to you and your crew. Something years of age and life surely ain't about handouts, so I lays my plan out. Hard work is dedicated to an art called survival. Consider John's lesson from conception to arrival. Now that I'm here, my fear shall decrease. Learn about life, making my way to the east. From four square yard struggler, the G's on time. Your God hit me with that rock.